Hello everyone. Today I am going to try to do a brief tutorial on how to use the interface to design levels on BlockQuest Maker. I had mentioned during my review that BlockQuest Maker doesn't hold your hand and most of the time I appreciated it, but there's definitely a few features that could have been pointed out better. So I'm going to try to correct that. Now I'm not going to go into good level design, I'm just going to teach some of the basics of designing a level. I went ahead ahead of time and filled out these fields. This is the name of the level as it will appear and this is a description of the level. Here you can choose your size, you can also enter it manually. I believe 32 by 32 is the maximum though. For now I just went with 20 by 20 because I don't think I'll need any more than that. So we click on create new. Here we have just an empty grid. Here is the player character starting position and here is the exit. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to press the down arrow to switch to event. And I'm already on the select and move tool. If I was not, I would press X. Choose the character and drag it closer to the middle. Just because that's where I want it to start. You certainly don't have to do that. ZL and ZR are how I'm zooming in and out. If I press down on the right stick, I get a grid view, which is actually a little more useful most of the time for building the level. Now I press back on the up arrow, and we're going to fill in some floor. I'm just going to go with grassland. Now, see the cursor here? I could click over here and do fill all. I don't think I'm going to do that for this level. So to start, we'll just fill in a little grass here. I may accelerate some of these portions. Now I'm going to switch back to this view to demonstrate something with the walls. So now I'm going to choose a wall. I'm actually going to go with the tree. This one is burnable. And I'm going to place it here, here, here. Now I want to show something about this interface right now. If I zoom out like so and choose a different wall, notice my arrow's kind of on the one tree there, but it's actually the block behind it that it's going to replace. It's always based on where you're pointing in the grid. Okay. Now I'll continue building up this wall. Now if we switch to event, that's where all the fun items are, including the pushable blocks. We're going to just create that most basic of exit puzzles here, which is just three blocks in a row. It doesn't really matter which ones these are which way these are facing. I guess we'll do four blocks in a row. Alright, now you can see I added some floor. Now I'm going to add an NPC because I can use that to demonstrate some of the things that were a little less obvious to start. So we're going to put our NPC right here. Now if we click on this picture, we can choose the different skins that we have unlocked. I haven't taken the time to unlock too many bodies just yet. Let's go with this look. Here we can enter a message for them to speak. So now if the player walks up to that one, it'll say, hello world. If we go over here, we can enter another message. And what will happen is if the player speaks to the NPC, both dialogues will appear one after the other in the order that they're numbered up on top of the box here. So this one would say hello world in one dialogue, then that dialogue would go away, and then it would say goodbye world. Now we need something that moves, anything that moves. Let's go with this. We're going to put it right there, and we're going to replace some of that ground with some tr more trees. going to choose the NPC here. Whoops, that was my mistake. Well, that'll help me teach one feature. We press Y. We are not on event, so it won't affect the NPC. It will only delete the ground there. The problem is it also deletes the ground, so let's just replace it with the floor. Okay. Now, I want to go to event and then make sure I have my grab tool. 
I'm going to choose the NPC again, and I'm going to choose Link. And I will choose the door then. Then we are going to save and test play so I can demonstrate what that does. Obviously we won't be able to clear the dungeon because we haven't moved the exit to where we can reach it. Talk to the NPC. Door opens. Cannot, however, close the door by talking to the NPC again. Now we choose retire and we go back to level design. Okay, next I'm going to add a switch right here, since we can get there after talking to the NPC. And what I'm going to have that switch do is I'm going to demonstrate opening multiple doors. First I'm going to add a few more walls and a little more floor. We'll go ahead and skip through that. Okay, I've added some walls and some flooring. Now I'm going to switch back and I am going to grab more doors. Now I'm going to press X to switch over to my select and move tool. I'm going to select the lever switch. Now I'm going to link the switch to this door right here. Now if I stay on the switch and choose link and choose this other door because I want to do multiple doors, that's what's going to happen. It's only going to do this door. So now I need to select this door and link this door the next door. Then I need to link this door to this door. Now, when we go and run through the level, and I realize that these blocks are kind of superfluous right now, but that's okay. This is just to demonstrate. So we need to talk to the NPC. And then we can hit the switch, and all three of those doors open that way. Now I want to look back at the NPC because there is a feature that I want to highlight here. Here where it says state, if we switch it so the yellow is on the right side, and in fact we'll just go ahead and show what happens here. Now she moves around. Still functions the same, just mobile. You'll notice here we also have multiple ways to display the door. Uh, if I had stone walls, I could actually hide it with that. Now, if we want to make things a little more lively, let's go ahead and add some monsters here. I'm going to go with the pumpkin head just because I haven't really used it much yet. I only really have one level published so far, in fact. Though that one seems to be going pretty well. Now here's an important thing when you are designing levels, I know I said I wouldn't go into quality too much, but we need to go back in there and make sure that that's reasonable to do for a character that hasn't been in the game long enough to level up, which at this point it will not have been. Though I suppose in the worst case it would make perfect sense for the player to avoid the pumpkin heads entirely. There's a level up already. This pumpkin head just killed the NPC. That didn't even occur to me. And that's why you play test your levels. Alright, so let's show you something on the monsters. Here in the item spot, you can choose arrow, bomb, magic wand, block, or kigi. If you choose one of those, then when you kill that monster, that's what it'll drop. I'm going to set that one to a key. And I'm going to skip ahead through adding some more ground. Okay, now that I have a little bit of space out here and a bit of a room built here, I'm going to go ahead and switch back to event with the down arrow. And I'm going to add the key door. I didn't mean to place it there. We'll grab it with the move tool. Now you notice it's pointing the wrong way, so we just click on it again with the move tool. That way it's turned the right way. 
next thing I want to do, I left a little hole here because I want to switch back to map and we're going to add some, we're just going to go with regular water there. Just more for decoration than anything else. I don't think anyone's actually going to fall into that. But just to make the level look more complete. Here we are going to switch back to event. I'm going to grab this door. Place it. And then we're going to, I wish there was a way to make the cursor move faster consistently. We're going to switch it to one of these. And I have the wrong wall there. So just give me a moment and I will be right back with you. Okay, I have the wall fixed, but I also realized I was placing the door in the wrong place. So let's try this again. We're gonna put the door here. Make sure we're on our select tool, rotate the door. And then we're gonna go ahead and switch it to this door. Now that is a little hard to keep track of. We're going to place this switch here and then we're going to link that switch to that door. Now we're going to add a little more flooring and we're going to move our exit over to there. Okay, so now this always starts in the bottom corner. We have to switch to event, select and grab tool, and then we just drag it. And we may have to scroll the screen and then pick it back up again too. Now we can click on it to rotate and make it look nice. We can also go up here and choose a different kind of exit. I'm gonna go with this one. However, I do need to put a floor under that one. I, mean, I don't need to, but it looks much nicer. I'm going to make it look a little bit different. Now, this is not bad, but it's a little bit barren. Over here we have the decorations tab. Let's go ahead and put like a table and a bookshelf over here, maybe. And we should add a couple monsters. So let's go ahead and add a slime or two over here. And I think a skeleton would be good over here in this room. Now skeletons, until they are distracted by the player, they will only move in a straight line back and forth in the direction that you face them. They don't turn. So by placing the skeleton there, I've made sure that it won't step on the switch. I feel like a slime down here might be a good idea too. Just to make the world look less empty. I wish I knew how difficult a snake was. I haven't followed one of those for a while. Maybe I'll put a couple bats up here yet. Just one. We're not trying to make an overly difficult level right now. Okay, so now we have to save the level. Then we are going to press the minus button, finish editing. And then we need to complete the level. This one had the key. A little worried that we're gonna be. Oh, we are stuck in here. So, this is a good reason for testing the level. Really, I should go back out and make it so that that NPC is not moving. There we have a key. There's the switch for that door, and notice if we get off the switch, the door comes back up. That's why we have the switch right next to the door. We have now created a one-way door, because now that I'm through it, I cannot go back through. And that is 
for your dungeon. And I need to figure out why that didn't appear. I will take care of that and making the NPC not move, and then I'll come back and show you the next part. Okay, I'm back. I took care of fixing the NPC, and I couldn't quite figure out what was going on with the portal exit. It looked like it was spawning underground. It still functioned, but it wasn't visible, so for the sake of our players, I chose to just switch it back to the stairs until I could figure that out. Now that I finished the test play, I can choose the share option. After I create an image. So back into the level. To create an image, we choose the camera up here. And what appears there is what will appear in the image. I kind of like this section right up here. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to set this as the thumbnail. Then we save again. This will not require us to replay it because we didn't actually change any of the structure of the dungeon. We just took a picture. So now we have our thumbnail image and we choose share. Now on this screen we get to choose a box. I'm going to go ahead and choose box two. You can see I've only created one little level. I'm going to make it so people can leave messages on gravestones. That's what this checkbox does. For the most part, I tend to favor leaving it unchecked because that gives too many hints away potentially. The play fee is currently set to 10. I'm actually going to change this to zero. We already did the test play, so now we just click share. First we can add tags. So let's add easy. Let's go with RPG. And it's probably more action than anything else. Now what you share. It does cost 50 gold to publish a dungeon. But eventually gold's not that hard to come by. All right, that's about it. I encourage you to experiment. You now you know where the link button is and how to change images, how to make a monsters drop items, how to connect multiple doors to a switch. You can also connect multiple switches to a door. You start at the switch and then you go to the door, start at the next switch and go to the door, and then you can go from that door to other doors. Uh, monsters have links. Just about anything can link to anything as long as it's in the event section and has some kind of interactivity. Thank you for spending your time with me today. If you enjoyed this, please let me know. Let me know if I should do more tutorial type videos. I would appreciate your comments. I would, And I would love if you would click that subscribe button, like the video. Thank you. Have a good day.